Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel, Art Classes My Way. Uh, so this is going to be the first video that I, or set of videos that I've ever done backwards. The second, I recorded the whole thing, uploaded them both to YouTube, found out that my first video did not uh, upload. So when I went to look, apparently uh, my phone had corrupted the video files. So now I have to re-record the entire beginning again once I have gotten it finished and I got to start the drawing all over. But I'm not entirely starting the drawing over, I'm just starting over uh, the fox which was the part of the drawing. You'll see the rest of it in the uh, the ending of the last one, uh, or uh, the second video to this. So we are drawing and we are learning how to do fur. Now I've already got my fox drawn here. There we go, get my camera to focus. So he's already on, the basic outline's going on, and refocus, there we go. And I'm going to start off with the hallmark areas, so you got your whisker areas and this kind of lip area, wherever the, this isn't the cheeks, the cheeks on a dog or a canine or, you know, where people are, it's, you know, back here. Um, I don't know if these would be called the lips or not. There's an awful lot of built up muscle in there. But I'm um, just using a HB pencil. And it is pretty common. You can find them anywhere. Or a 2B. Doesn't really much matter as far as the pencil. And really all we're going to be using is going to be the HB here. And then the 6B uh, will be used in the second video to darken up certain areas. Now you can see these little dots here from where the uh, whiskers will come out of. Uh, that's pretty much as dark as I ever want this pencil to really get. I'm not, one pencil does not do the work of every pencil. Then that's when you start getting really shiny pictures, really shiny drawings instead of those, uh, nice lovely line works although cameras and photography still picks it up um so i'm gonna go ahead and the little nostril area there and make this pretty smooth lines now my light is coming from this direction so the top of this nose is going to be a lighter gray than the rest of it and really even though i have the nostril pretty dark. The rest of this nose is still going to be really, really dark. Because, you know, little foxes have black noses. There we are. Good enough. And now for the hair. Now I'm using uh, an edge that uh, on my pencil, it's a little bit, uh, you can see it's a little strange. Uh, you, I pretty much I've used it all the way down to the wood here. But, there is still a little bit of graphite left there on the edges that I can use. And I do like to typically grip my pencil quite far down. And let's start building up the shorter hairs on the mouth and muzzle area. Pretty much this whole area is full of short hairs. Uh, the jawline is full of short hairs. So, we won't have to worry so much about them. Um, but then all this hair eventually gets longer and longer. And it also changes directions in multiple places. And you might think, well, that's why I like doing short-haired animals. Well, even then, a short-haired animal, their hair will go in multiple directions if you really look at them. So, the importance here is to have a light touch... When you're putting in your shorter, coarser little hairs here. Just kind of using right now to define um, the edges of this fox. His nose, for instance, and where the, uh, the darker bits will be coming out. And 
just lightly touch, 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 touch. Now there's really no quick way about going going about drawing. Uh, you see a lot of artists, they'll do speed drawings, speed paintings and whatnot. And they also have many, many years of practice uh, that you as a beginner may not have. So don't always expect to do things as quickly as you see other people doing them. And then you have like those programs where, oh, uh, learn to draw in just so many days by, you know, ordering our, oh, what are they, ordering our videos for nine ninety nine a month. I remember those commercials from when I was a little kid, and, and then they make it seem like, oh, you can draw like this after just, you know, amazingly just after our first video and like. No, it takes work and effort. They never tell you that, yeah, you can draw like this after you're, after watching our video, but practice, practice, practice. They never tell you about the practice part in the commercial. All right. Now, the fox's face, and especially right around in the whisker area, a lot of them have like a black smooch around in here. Instead of the fur being quite so red, I think. I'm going to grab a different pencil here real quick. It's still a 2B pencil, but it's got a better tip on it. And I'm just going to kind of darken this area up just a tiny bit. And really, I'm not pushing down any harder than what I did throughout this whole thing. I'm just basically putting these lines down thicker in here. Now you're seeing that uh, I'm not going back and forth, never go back and forth uh, for pretty much anything. What I'm actually doing is I'm making a mark, lifting up, going back, making the mark. Of course, this is a very extreme example of what it is that I'm doing. But eventually, it kind of becomes like pointillism. You um, develop this rhythm for it. And it's just like second nature. Here we go. A little bit darker right there. Nice fluffy face. Uh, but short haired. And let me make sure. Yep. So I'm going to bring this down just a little bit. Now we still have our little dark areas. I'll go ahead and just redarken some of those up a tiny bit all right and now this is all going to get lighter again more like the top of the nose and actually I'm gonna darken that up so there's a feels like there's a difference between the nose and the uh, the rest of the face there now there is kind of this area where kind of pulling back there and then there's a couple of little little areas around here where the hair's kind of rippled around the mouth and I'm sure uh, a lot of you could probably if you have a dog you can go and take a look at those um, those areas around their their mouth you know observe them when they're yawning you'll see the kind of thing that's going on here just a little bit and it's just the way that a lot of critters mouths are and of course there are some that don't have it cleaning up that definite line there. Um, there are some dogs and, and cats that would not have something like that. Uh, and that, you know, that's just like people. You got some people that can curl their tongue and some people that can't. And you got some dogs and cats who have almost like excess lippage. <laughs> the nice plump lips. Uh, that something like this would happen. At least I think that's what it is that's going on. It seems like it's what goes on whenever I investigate my own dog's mouth. I'm going to go ahead and darken in where this eye is. And that's just a nice smooth line because it's basically the skin of the actual eyelid. I'm going to give him some eyelashes because even 
dogs and, and such as have eyelids too. And even though this is a fox, it's not a dog. But they do come from the canine family. It goes canines, wolves and dogs, vul vulpes, vulpix, not vulpix, that's a Pokemon. Vulpes, which that's what a fox is. So they, they do come from the canine branch. Which I could have swore when I was a kid, somebody told me that a fox is not a canine. I swear I heard that from somewhere, but now I look it up and everything like, nope, nope, it's a canine. Alright, now we're just going to go down the face. Now, you got the front of the lips here, which is a little darker, and let me come in here and add a little bit more color. There we go. The front of the mouth here is white. The edge of the mouth is also white. And depending on what time of year you caught the fox, sometimes this area could be darker than normal, but normally the underjaw is also white. We'll deal with the, the underjaw will be in the other video. <laughs> it's like I know the future. Okay, now we can do a bit of a direction change. Once we get done with all of this, I'm just marking down that direction change so that way I don't forget it. Yeah. And we can kind of work our piece towards that. Now I'm coming in here and I'm getting um, things a little bit more separate. Now you never want to just, you know, Line, 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 line. Yep, yeah, that's not going to look right. I don't want to make that any darker, otherwise I'll ruin the paper. You don't want to make just a straight row of lines. It never looks right. I'm going random links, random little bits. This is an exaggerated view. I'm not going with lines this long. But I am not really trying to control the consistency of my lines, I am just trying to control the direction that they tend to go in. And now I'm going to start rotating. a little bit right in here to show where the skull pretty much holds in the eyeball right here like here's the eyeball in here draw that in really light and then there's a bone that comes around here kind of like our cheekbone so in order to show that I'm going to darken up just outside of there so that way it kind of feels like a highlight or a highlighted area there we go. That should be all we really need. And then just keep keep it going, keep it going. Do, do, do. Look at that pretty face. Now as we get back here, more about round in here, that's when the hair is going to start getting longer. And that's just a simple matter of just making a longer line. And again, I hold back a little further on my pencil. This keeps me from drawing too dark all at one time. There is nothing wrong with slowly building up your graphite and your lead pencil marks. You don't want to just go in here and do it all at once because what happens if you make a mistake? Well, now you can't erase it because you've ingrained it down in there. If I wanted to, 
come in here and erase this nose. I could. You wouldn't know that it was ever really there. So that's really the kind of a light hand you want to have when you're using, uh, when you're drawing here. All right. Where to go from here? Let's work on the top here. This top area is very, very plushy. So I'm going to erase some of these lines. I want just a vague idea of, because I don't want to accidentally make it, you can see the, the line that's still there, but I don't want to accidentally end up making it so plushy that I go way out of bounds and out of the realm of uh, reality. So I do want that line there. Now to get the idea of something being plushy as opposed to maybe short and coarse like this area, we're going to have to change tactics a little bit to an even smaller line. And this line, an exaggerated example, kind of think of like, like commas, like that where the first, or I'm not actually going round and round, but first it's a dot and then I just drag a teeny tiny bit when I lift upwards, which gives me this very fine dot or a drag kind of looking dot. Let's see, I need to go back about to here with this. And I'm kind of going to outline this kind of poof area where everything's much softer. We'll make it nice and smooth looking. And then we're going to come in and put some small details because um, with a wild animal obviously their hair is not going to be perfectly uniform and plush like you would see in the, um, the dog kennel shows or anything like that. Yeah, wild animals not going to have a manicurist on hand. So even these little fluffy poofy areas are going to be a little bit different. Now we've got a bit of a shaded area here to mark a bit of a transition. The transition goes into the uh, ear that's over here. This area is all pretty, pretty plushy right in there. And then this area kind of goes off a little bit more about in here. So we're going to put that in while still trying to maintain the idea of fluffy. And that is just a matter of making our marks like we have been. These kind of little comma-y little things but just putting them much closer together. And almost, in a way, it is kind of a little bit like pointillism, but with a pencil. Smooth that out there. And this plushiness kind of does come out over the eye a little bit. Let me uh, start over there. There we go. So a very small amount of it does come out over that eye. And it starts turning into those longer hairs and then that's just mixing your two lines that I showed you or well marks this kind of pointillism kind of look goes down first and then it just starts getting a little longer and a little longer kind of show the fold of uh, the eyebrow area. Yeah. 
And if you wanted to, you could go a little darker there with the B6. And now I'm going to come up in here a little bit. Because this guy has still got a good chunk of his winter coat going on. Make that a little bit more shaded for this nose area. Go back to laying down some of those little lines. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty simple. Now if you wanted to come in really lightly and put a few longer kind of downy like hairs, you're more than welcome to. Kind of helps a little bit. Keep things from looking too uniform. There we go. Alright, now we're ready to move forward. Now this area is short but plushy. Now how we're going to do <laughs> short but plushy? Kind of going to be a combination of the two, but we're going to go, I'm going to grab a hold of the very end of my pencil here. So that way I have as little control over how hard my pencil touches the paper. This allows me to create a very super light line, very fine line that will help me achieve that kind of soft, plushy, velvety feel of fur. And if you just want the area to be darker, more lines as opposed to pushing down harder and harder on the pencil. Because the harder and harder you push, so this is about a medium tone uh, amount of pressure I put down. Over here it's so super soft that it's translating into that fur being super soft. Oh, so soft. So plushy. Yeah, got some kind of kind of lines over here. It's not necessarily crow's feet, but it's kind of what it makes me think of. It's just the way that the hair ripples over. And we'll transition these hairs into these hairs. And that's just putting a few of these super fine hairs in here and it'll translate real well. Making sure I'm going multiple ways where, yes, the hair is going in this direction. This hair is eventually going to go in this direction. This one is going to be kind of coming over this way. It does go in multiple directions, but you can still get the feeling of something going in a direction, but not making every single one of them lay exact. To each other and you can even cross over in a few places as well let's see and this is an area of where the fur's kind of been indented now you can just come in here and just you know, shade it in, but you, even though the fur is indented, you still have the feeling of it being separated, like this side would not be perfect because this end, this whole line here, is hair. So that's a little bit too perfect and a little bit too uniform, so I make sure it is not kept perfectly uniform and that'll help with the uh, illusion of it and then come in and just kind of make, make some deeper ones so that way it feels like multiple bits of hair there things get clumpy at times you know when you, when you live out in the wild
can kind of shade up this way just a little bit. Just put a few little lines here and there to show that this area is longer than this area, but overall it's still a lot of downy soft goodness. vague idea that that's where the head goes. And of course the hair past the back of the head, that's when it's going to start getting a lot coarser. Of this hair here is kind of laying on top of another kind of almost like a like a different area like if you had the cheekbone here this is all the hair coming off of that cheekbone and then this is all the hair that behind that cheekbone and the way that you know hair is observe your dogs your cats uh, your local pets a friend's pet to kind of get an idea of how hair, especially long hair, works. Uh, but this is the kind of behind area that's going to end up in a little bit different place. So we're going to make it a little lighter as it comes out because this is a part of the ear. Kind of if you feel behind your own ear, you know, right behind the jawline area kind of that, except on animals, uh, they have the muscles that make their ears move, and that's one of the areas, the other area is up here. Looking pretty good. I don't know why my voice just cracked then. Whatever, I'm 31. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to keep on keeping on. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight this darker area behind the ear here. Because this hair is on top of this hair. And considerably, and since the light's coming from this direction, the ear is going to be blocking a lot of that light. And I don't want it to be perfectly uniform. Kind of think of it as uh, inverting everything here. I personally, I constantly rotate my pencil while I'm drawing so that way I can prolong having to go and sharpen it. See, there's a little divot right behind his ear here. Put that in as well. Mm -hmm. And just kind of bridge the gap between the two. The sharper your pencil, the easier the time you're going to have with this. And I do love mechanical pencils. I think they're a great tool, especially when you're wanting to get nice, sharp, sharp lines. And you can get soft lines. The only problem is most people can't get those softer lines because they never learn how to get the muscle control and the... Uh, the hand control over the pencil correctly and you think oh well, I have mastery over a pencil everybody you know has to write well there's a difference between writing and drawing and it's about more than just uh, knowing where things go a great deal of it is also having 
the ability to draw lightly and you know in a way I'm not, not going to compare drawing to a sport but there is a lot of muscle memory muscle control that you have to learn in addition to knowing how anatomy works and how things are, are placed it's just the way it is all right so we got behind this ear pretty good honestly I could even go a little darker but that's dark enough for now I'll at least remember where it is one would hope and we've got the hairs kind of changing direction here and go darker behind that looking great so now I want to take care of some of the neck area now how do you make long hairs one feel long even though they're coming up at the viewer they're coming directly at you uh, basically foreshortening it's actually way easier than most people think first I like to start off with the dark areas that are underneath the hair kind of like you know some of these areas here I like to go ahead and fill some of those in and typically that's when things do have a direction because then the hairs from here will curl upwards or something along those lines normally you are seeing the underside of the hair with uh, these kind of parts on one side or the other in this case it's going to be more going the longer hairs are going to go this way and you got some that are curling in an upwards like fashion so grip up a little bit and just kind of do some of those areas. And then I'm going to come in long line and curl. Kind of curl in that way. And the hair does change directions. And sometimes it's just a matter of not putting the details in that you think that you would put in because when things get foreshortened it's not exactly how we think it would be make sure that's not just a perfect straight line there erase a couple of little areas and erase a little more Whee! Do, do, do. 
the kind of the direction that the hair tends to take on the neck until about here in my photo anyway it pretty much all goes in this direction and then it slowly starts to change so we can make quite a few of our longer hairs on over here start clumping even above this area so that way it doesn't entirely come out of the blue and that's just leave making some basically like you're trying to highlight the underside of some areas of hair There we go, got our kind of change going on. And then by having the rest of the hair longer past that area, we can still even put some, so that way it's not like abrupt, just this one spot of darkness here. We can take it out a little bit further This is going behind the ear again, so this is going to be quite a bit darker. Make sure to put it in in multiple levels so that way it doesn't look too uniform. There's your going. So, looking great. a few more details in the face here. We do have a little moly moly mole. Or it could be a divot. It's really hard to tell. I got a pretty pixelated photo that I'm working off here. And even though there's some areas I want to shade in to give the, the fur a sense of depth and uh, you know, kind of help with the hints of lushiness here and there, even though you could just come in here and buff, 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 and just fill in. You don't want to do that. You want everything to feel like, like it's hairs laying on top of each other. So that way nothing ends up being too uniform, too perfect. We don't want it to be like that because then it won't feel as wild or natural anymore. Kind 
have the underjaw here. Getting to be the point of sharpening my pencil again. This has already been through two trying to do this two to three times already, poor thing. And if you just want to add a sense of darkness to it, uh, to, you know, to, like overall maybe the hair is just too light, doesn't feel quite right color-wise to you, then just go back in and start filling in with more lines. Now for the black or black areas, like what I'm, like right here, yeah, I'm gonna push a little bit harder, but not that hard. I'm not gonna go at it like gangbusters. Don't wanna go too wild with it. Slow and steady wins the race, and with speed will come with knowledge. little tuft here is probably a little too bright and probably needs just a little bit more roughness to it. You can always come back in and change things and make them slightly darker or maybe make some more details here and there and change things. Now there is a dark area right here in front of the ear. And let's go ahead and kind of put that in. It's kind of a combination again plush and uh, long hairs. Long hairs down here, plush up here. Just make that a little darker. And also remember your eraser is also, it's not just a tool for erasing mistakes, it is also a method for drawing as well. So I'm going to kind of come in here just a little bit and hit some of these areas. There. And we'll make this feel a little less uh, perfect. some of that there. Alright. I'm going to go ahead and put in some of my plush dots that I have been doing. Need to do it a little lighter. <laughs> and it's looking like freckles instead.
looking lovely. All right, I'm going to cut that video here and I actually going to do my outro because I had completely lost track of time and what I was doing in my previous one and I just like at the end of it even though I'm still talking I was like thanks for coming and hanging out yeah I totally did not know what I was doing I was couldn't keep track of time so here is at least this should catch you up to everything I did um, for the next video a uh, little bit more condensed down this time and you're not seeing the rest of the picture you will see the rest of the picture though uh, in a little when the next one posts so Thanks for coming and hanging out, guys. I do hope this video helps you out being able to transition transition between the shorter hairs, plushy hair, longer hairs, and how to hit all those areas in between, as well as knowing when to change directions and that one, well, the hair on an animal does change directions, believe it or not, in uh, many ways. In, the face is definitely the most complex area for that. I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, favorite, subscribe. Do all those wonderful things that you people do to help uh, me get maybe more noticed by YouTube and other people who might also need help. Uh, I do have an Etsy account. And if you would like to, a lot of my stuff does end up showing up there if you would like to purchase anything. I do also have a Patreon if uh, maybe you want to go with a cheaper option. A dollar is most fantastic of you guys. I, I couldn't ask for anything more. And uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything left to say other than I messed up and I hope I, I, hope I did this right. Uh, when are you guys not hearing that? I know. Uh, so I do hope you all had a wonderful day. Have a wonderful evening. And be good. As good as you can be. <laughs> and I hope you guys all have a good one. Thanks for hanging out.